Hi, this is Arn Senadella, Spark Multifamily Investment Group out of Greenville, South Carolina. And today I'm going to give a short presentation on market, market selection. Uh, it's a topic real estate investors love to talk about. What's the best market to invest in? How do you determine what the good markets to invest in are? Uh, so I'll go through some thoughts and ideas about how one, how an investor goes about selecting a market. And, and first I would say, you don't want to try to learn 10, 15 different markets. I submit spreading yourself too thin you just won't get anywhere. So my suggestion would be perhaps identify two, no more than three markets for further evaluation uh, because in order to be successful in a market, you need to know it. You need to know the players in the market, the brokers, the property managers, the contractors and so, so on and so forth. So if you're trying to learn 10, 15 markets, you're never going to reach critical mass in a market where you can actually start winning deals, knowing the market and so on and so forth. So I would say pick no more than two or three markets maximum and really drill deep into those markets, really get to know them. And then I'd say ultimately pick one market and really concentrate your activities in that one market. So what's some of the criteria that people look at? Um, it's fairly well known. Population growth and job growth are key factors. I'd say they're probably number one, number two, where population's growing, real estate's in demand, People go where the jobs are, where jobs are growing, people are going to move to. So the top two criteria would be population growth and job growth. Um, and then I'd say in terms of employment, you want a diverse economy. So, for example, here in Greenville, South Carolina, we have major auto manufacturers, BMW, Michelin, and a whole host of smaller companies that manufacture parts for these larger facilities at BMW and Michelin. In addition, we're on I-85 corridor, so there's a lot of logistics, transportation, warehousing, and so forth. We have strong medical providers here, two major hospital chains, uh, Clemson University and, and Furman University are nearby. Uh, and then it's also kind of a hospitality leisure thing. Downtown Greenville is uh, quite an active place, performing arts center, minor league baseball, minor league hockey. There's great hiking, walking, biking on the Swamp Rabbit Trail up into the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So not to go on about Greenville, but I think you get the idea. The best areas to invest, in my opinion, are areas that have three or four major sectors that employ people. Because with the diversified economy, if business slows in automotive, uh, there's still plenty of economic activity going on in Greenville, and so it's going to continue to prosper. If you're in a town where there's only one major industry and that industry goes on hard times, uh, your investment's going to be hurt. So look for diversified economies. And then, of course, uh, I think you generally want to invest in states that are fairly landlord friendly. That doesn't mean they're opposed to tenants, but it means landlords are treated fairly uh, in dealing with the tenants and so forth. Uh, I spent most of my life in San Francisco Bay Area and uh, managed a lot of property there. And I can tell you, I told my property owners, when you go to court, basically figure the landlord is guilty 
until proven innocent. Now that may be a little bit of hyperbole, but I think you get the point. So I think you want to invest in states that are fairly landlord friendly. The other thing I would say is the issues between tenants and landlords typically are handled at the county court level. So it's maybe not even so much a state being landlord friendly, but more what's the aspect of the county and kind of what's their take on landlord tenant uh, interactions, uh, legal proceedings and so on and so forth. So it's not only the state that matters, the county in some way is actually more important. Uh, Other factors to consider would be Are there major universities nearby? Employers want educated workforce. So generally in an area where there are major universities, probably a pretty good place to invest. You got a young educated workforce coming out, which of course are probably your ideal multifamily apartment tenants. So look for major universities, uh, the highly educated population, I think would be another place, another thing I would look at. Uh, Good medical facilities would be another one. And then uh, with the the, the trend back towards insourcing, meaning manufacture of goods in the United States based on what happened with the supply chain in China, uh, investing in areas along major interstates is probably a good idea too. The transportation and logistics is gonna be very uh, very strong there. And uh, those are some factors, job growth, population growth, job diversity, educated population, landlord air, landlord friendly areas, and uh, good logistical asset access generally along uh, major interstate freeways. Um, the other thing that what I'd say is when people, when I talk to investors, I always encourage them to really define what they're looking for. There's an old expression that kind of says, if you don't know what you're aiming for, you're going to hit it 100% of the time. So what I mean by that is what what kind of property are you looking to buy? Are you going after 40 unit mom and pop buildings? Are you going after 250 unit luxury downtown apartments? Uh, What is your buy box? What type of property are you looking to buy? Kind of maybe location? Are you looking urban, suburban, age? Are you looking value-add 70s deals? Are you looking for brand new construction downtown? So to the degree you can narrow down your buy criteria, the better off you're going to be. And that then brings me to uh, another point about how do you actually go into a market and start learning the market, start discovering opportunities, finding properties and so on and so forth. And it all starts with the brokers. So in the markets that you've selected, spend significant time outreaching to brokers who again, handle and sell the type properties you do. Marcus and Millichap, for example, probably isn't going to be selling a $50 million apartment building. CBRE is probably not handling a $5 million apartment building. So brokers have specialties and you need to find the brokers in the markets you like that handle the property type that you're looking for. And for out-of-state investors, you have to understand in the strong Sunbelt markets often, uh, the brokers are always getting calls from people in California and New York. And the truth is the brokers aren't probably going to give you the time of day until you take the time to come into the market, 
take your time, spend the money, invest your time and energy into actually coming to the market, sitting down with these brokers, property managers, other investors, go to networking meets, get in the market, get face to face, belly to belly with the brokers. Uh, trust me, if you fly the way all the way from California to Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, the broker in Raleigh is probably going to consider you a serious buyer since you just spent, you know, a couple thousand bucks and, you know, three, four days to get there. So I encourage you to get into the market. Uh, and the other thing is when you're in these markets, talk to the people in the hotel, talk to people you, 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 you see out on the street uh, at the restaurants, uh, they're not trying to sell you anything. So when you ask, hey, what's going on here? What do you like? What's good? What are the, some of the problems? You're going to get an honest response from these people because they have nothing to sell. They're not in the property business. They're just going to give you their honest assessment of the community. Um, the other thing I often do when I'm starting to evaluate a new market, I subscribe to the local newspaper or the local business journal and doesn't cost that much, usually five, ten dollars a month. And if you're serious about looking in a market, get the newspaper every day. And it's not that you have to read it cover to cover, but you'll get a sense of Lockheed Martin is opening a facility here or Volvo's opening a new plant here. And so you'll get a sense of the growth of the community, what businesses are coming in, what's kind of happening. So talk to the locals, get out with your eyes and ears open, get a sense for the market and, and so forth. So you really, again, I'll come back to you got to kind of dig deep and you're going to have to keep getting in front of these brokers uh, before they start taking you serious. So drill down, don't spread too thin. Um, when you're in these markets, drive some of the potential neighborhoods. Uh, uh, hopefully you've selected three or four properties maybe to evaluate. Not that you're so much going to buy them right now, but uh, it'll give you an idea, get on site, see if you can get in a unit, act like you're a prospective tenant, get on site, get a feel for what these properties are worth, talk to the on-site leasing people, get their sense of what's going on. A lot of times they'll talk and give you great information. You just kind of have to, just kind of have to ask the questions. Um, a lot of people like to look at data, and certainly that's worthwhile. Uh, I tend to more go on my visceral experience by being in the market and seeing for myself, but there are great data sources, CoStar, City Data, Census Data. It's all relatively available, readily available on the web. Um, so if you like digging down into that data, start with City Data and Census Data and you'll get some good data. Uh, to evaluate those markets. Um, so what's what's the conclusion? Uh, is there a best market to invest in? Uh, I would submit no, because I would submit each investor is different and they have different goals from their investing. So one market might be a great cash flow market. And if you're really looking to maybe build long-term wealth and a legacy and you're looking 20 years out, maybe immediate cash flow is not your most critical factor. Kind of maybe more long-term growth equity potential is, is, is more important. Um, the other thing I would submit is as you consider markets that are out of your area, think about the logistics of getting there on a regular basis. And, and by that, I mean, uh, if the market you think you want to start investing in requires 
two or three flights and takes you all day to get to, you might not find the time or have the energy to get in that market often enough to really get to learn it, get to build the trust of the brokers in the market to understand you're the real deal. Um, so when you're selecting a market, think about the logistic factors of getting there, being able to take a direct nonstop flight two hours from your home to get to a market is a lot easier than having to take three flights that take nine hours to get to. So think about markets that are actually logistically accessible to you uh, because you need to get in these markets enough to really learn them and establish credibility uh, with, with the brokers. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I think that's about it for now. So hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, drill down, pick two or three markets, then focus on one and then really concentrate your activity in those markets. Be clear about your buying criteria what type of property are you gonna you're trying to buy? Uh, what size? What kind of price range? Because the, to the degree you can drill down on what you're specifically looking for, uh, you're gonna be more successful. And of course, when you're visiting these markets, you're also going to be interviewing property managers. And you also should probably be talking to local lenders, typically going to be local, small, mid-sized banks and or credit unions. So while you're visiting these markets, not only the brokers, start establishing connections with property management companies and also lenders, because when you buy that first asset in this new market, you need to have your team in place before you buy that first property. And the other thing, the local team can help educate you on the market. And so they're gonna be a great resource for you. So my final, my final thought today is, what's the best market to invest in? Uh, I'd submit the best market to invest in is the market you know best. So one can make good investments in any market. One can find good investments in New York and Chicago, just as well as Dallas, Texas, or Charlotte, North Carolina. There are good investments to be found everywhere. And I'd submit at the end of the day, it's your local knowledge, or let's not say local, it's your market knowledge of a specific market that's going to be your competitive advantage. To the degree you understand your market, whatever market that is, to the degree you understand your market better than your competition, you're gonna win. So for example, like at Spark Investment Group, uh, my primary partner, Brian Walsh, and I both live in Greenville County, Greenville, South Carolina, and we pretty much only do joint venture and syndication deals in Greenville, South Carolina. It's a market we know well. We know the rents. We know the buildings. We know the neighborhoods. We have established con uh, connections with local brokers, property uh, managers, though we don't, we're, we're basically vertically integrated, co construction vendors. So uh, we only invest in the market we know best, which happens to be the market we live in. Uh, but if you invest out of area, you're still going to want to have that kind of intimate knowledge of the market, which means you need to spend some time there. So uh, I'd submit the best market to invest in is the market you know best. So hopefully that's uh, helpful. Uh, enjoy the, the, the presentation. Happy to discuss further. Uh, just reach out anytime. 
Facebook, LinkedIn, happy to have a discussion. And again, hopefully this has been of some help in talking about helping you think about market selection. Thanks so much. Have a good one.